Hey, welcome. We're on November 22nd. Uh, and I want to present a very short uh, lightning talk um, relating to my view and my perspective on the last couple of uh, releases that we've done out of the Adoptium, Eclipse Adoptium project. Uh, and I call it the 30,000 foot view. And the reason that term exists at all is that's a uh, very common uh, flight height of airplanes. So viewing it from an airplane returning home from EclipseCon in Germany uh, and looking back at, um, at the October release and also the September release. And I will also add that this perspective is different than the perspective that we often have when we're participating in the release, when you're down in the trenches, um, this one is looking up and seeing the big picture. Uh, sorry, I'm having, I'll have to escape and get rid of the meeting recording note. Oh. There we go. Okay. Right in the middle of this, Zoom has put a big recording note that I can't seem to remove. But anyway. All right. So the big picture uh, here, and people have seen this before, I created this a giant picture, which now is starting to look rather complex of the Adoptium release process. And you'll note that um, we have swim lanes for different parts of that process. There's a JDK production swim lane at the top. There's activities relating to publishing installers and containers. There's a whole communication swim lane that happens. Uh, a couple of different types of testing swim lanes, Aquavit and TCK. Now we have a new swim lane added to the diagram called Secure Dev and the activities related to some of the artifacts and things that we create with each and every build that we do at Adoptium. And then uh, as always, and what this exercise is a part of is the assessment swim lane. How do we assess and adjust after each time we release a product uh, to do better the next time or uh, figure out what went well and celebrate that. So uh, first of all, going to our September release, the uh, that release is JDK 21. In that release, we uh, ended up publishing seven products, I'll call them. Uh, so that's seven different platforms on that version. Um, and if you look at our scorecards, uh, as, as you see it, the straight up value would show that we were late. We were over three weeks late to deliver this. Interestingly, um, in this case, this was something that was outside of our control. The delay was actually due to missing some TCK material. Um, new A new legal agreement was required. Um, in terms of legal agreements, I guess you could also say three weeks ain't so bad. <laughs> considering it was a legal agreement that needed to be procured and arranged. So that says the first time we're ever running this TCK material. And I have to say, I'm very impressed that uh, with the adjusted uh, scorecard based on when we received the actual material, October 9th, we were publishing binaries on the 10th, 11th and 12th to, to finish off that release. So quite incredible, given that that was the first ever time we were running uh, those TCKs and they there were some new things to, to deal with as part of that. Uh, so October release, when we look at what that is, a much, much bigger release, it's actually 39 products. And I say products because we had four different Java versions in there and in those versions, a selection of platforms that we produce. Um, as a kind of a first look from a very big uh, distance away, some of the challenges that came for us in the October release, I think the snowball effect of uh, the late September release that was eating into the prep time for October. Plus when you do two releases so close together, the teams that are working on this release really suffer from release fatigue. Uh, as we go into October release, the, the Tebron compliance project was slightly short staffed. I know we had 
certainly would have missed Scott, who uh, presented at his first conference in EclipseCon in Java Community Day, but also uh, was a very probably missing body out of that Timur compliance group. Myself, maybe not as missing because I don't li lift as heavy a load as Scott does in that project. Um, but when we look then at the, the real ch next challenges seen from a distance, um, the things that cause the most delays when I look at the scorecards. So when we're saying, what's our target? Two days for primaries, seven days for secondaries. Where did we miss our target? And what were the biggest uh, places where we missed it? The cause for most of those were the signing service failures. So, um, and in, in several locations. So I'm not gonna, again, dive into too deep of a detail, except to say that both uh, the, in the big picture, we'll look at it again uh, in the next slide, in both the case where we were signing as part of the build and the case where we were signing uh, to notarize installers, when we send things off to the Eclipse signing service, things were failing. And the issue is that not only were they failing, but we weren't noticing they were failing. Um, so that caused us to need to do rebuilds and rebuilds are very expensive. But before we all doom and gloom it uh, for October, I do wanna say, I actually think it's incredible what happened uh, the team <laughs> was able to still have a decent score, uh, and I call these the golf scores. They're found at the Aurelie scorecards page um, with, with the link below. But given what we were, the, the golf scores we were producing in 2022 versus the golf scores we produce today, uh, there's been a great improvement in our ability to meet any challenge that comes our way and over, overcome them. Um, so I do wanna shout out, this is not a, this is actually a celebration of what happened in September and October, given the challenges that were faced. So the big picture thinking then was the biggest delay in September uh, was in this swim lane TCK. Everything was blocked until we had the actual material. So on the bright side, um, the moment we received the TCK material, everything else had been completed and we were ready to go and we delivered things within uh, zero to three days. However, as you finish the September release, you don't have enough of a gap between the next one that starts. So we have too short of a time, uh, no, no chance to kind of recover. And we head directly into our October release. And as mentioned, uh, the, the main kind of delays that occurred were in that signing service. I'm very happy to report that when we look at what activities are already underway to deal with this, one could say, well, first we should make sure that the Eclipse signing service is resilient to be able to not fail. And in fact, uh, we see the Eclipse Infra team already having made improvements in this area based on what happened in our October release. So thank you very much to them for uh, addressing some of those issues. And I think they still have another thing they're looking at to make it more resilient. But also in terms of us not seeing this, uh, I as of yesterday, I see some pull requests going in to make sure that these kinds of failures get spotted early and we fail fast and don't proceed on. Because as you proceed on with this, you're wasting valuable time and resources and we end up having to do rebuilds. So instead of having to repeat, only do this JDK production line 39 times, you have to add in all those rebuilds. And some of these swim lanes have to be repeated again and again. So that's why I call them expensive when we have to do them. The five minute lightning talk is at an end. I just wanted to call out that it's actually a truly amazing set of scorecards uh, given all the challenges that the team faced and overcome in September and October. And I think the 
whole point of me looking at this and us uh, having scorecards and putting that as part of our assess and adjust swim lane is to say, we want to continue improving what we do. We want to identify the root problems and fix them, not just band-aid. So it, the example of the signing service, figure out what was actually causing the problems that we were seeing and, and getting that fixed is important because yes, we can work around certain things by retries and all this stuff, but it ultimately needs to happen at the root of the problems. Um, and then prioritizing the fixes that have a high impact. You know, when we look through the retrospective yesterday, there are things when you are down in the trenches that are truly irritating and you put them in the retrospective and we likely should fix those for the happiness of the team. But those aren't the things that are causing the delays in the release. Um, those are the things that are causing discontent. And so they are valuable to fix. But from the perspective of us as a project, we're going to take a look and prioritize the things that cause those big delays. Um, I, I will also say talking uh, and just looking at the length and complexity of our release checklist, it's actually gotten longer and uh, more wordy. <laughs> I think one of the uh, outcomes from interviewing release champions and talking to people who have done it over the past is if we can continue to reduce the complexity and remove items from the checklist so no one ever has to think about doing a hundred items, but it's now only 20. Uh, that's the direction we have to keep moving in. Uh, and then yes, continue to meet and exceed our targets. So continuing to have those great golf scores and working towards um, probably making the par or the usual or the expected outcomes even um, better. So I can see based on the trends that we have seen over the last year that eventually we'll get to the point where it's a one day for primaries and a five day for secondaries. I think that's something we will achieve uh, even if we don't move the goalposts. But that's it. Uh, I wanna thank everyone for who worked on both of those releases. It's just incredible and thank you for letting me uh, see it from a uh, 30,000 feet and having a break from the October one. <laughs> All right, that's it. Any questions?